Okay, so this is the beginning of our topic on functions and relations. Um, and in this video, we're going to be looking at what makes something a relation, what makes something a function, um, and associated uh, ideas around that. Um, this topic is quite a um, dry topic, if you like, not just this video, but the topic. Um, but there's a huge amount of really important um, definitional things so you know the definition of what makes something a function what makes something a relation um, you know domain range a lot of notational things as well that are really important throughout this topic um, to get right so in this video I'm not really going to go through many if any I'm not really going to go through any examples I'm really just going to talk through some ideas um, the text of which is already um, here so we want to start at the beginning with a relation so a relation is a set of ordered pairs, okay? Ordered pairs are coordinates, x, y, okay? So that's an ordered pair, okay? So a relation is a set of coordinates. So basically anything that you could draw on the Cartesian plane is a relation. That might be one point. It might be a random set of points. It might be a non-random set of points. So um, this second graph here, we can see the points follow a line, but they don't make a line because these points in between these aren't included. But one, two, three, four, mm, it's hard to tell whether there's one there, five, six, seven, eight, nine points that have a pattern to them. Okay. Um, it might be a straight line. It might be a parabola. It might be a hyperbola. It might be um, an inverse parabola. Um, it's still the shape is still a parabola, but essentially it's a you know um, y squared equals x. Um, it might be figure eight. It might be a whole any one of these other in interesting graphs and functions. It might be this bell shaped curve, which we'll learn more about later in the year. Um, it might be a smiley face. Uh, it might be a house. Anything that you can draw on a Cartesian plane is a relation. Okay, so only some relations are functions. Let's have a look at, uh, oh no, before we do that, let's um, have a chat about categorizing relations. So there are four different types of relations. One-to-one -one relations, many-to-one relations, one-to-many relations, and many-to-many -many relations. Okay, when we have a look at this one to one, many to one, one to many, essentially this is the input and this is the output. We'll talk more about input and output of functions um, in a couple of videos' time. So, i.e., the x values, i.e., the y values. Okay, so what this one to one means is for every one piece of input, one x value, there is one, only one y value. Okay. Um, so, whereas many to one, we can have more than one x value or input value produces the same one y value. So, an example of a one to one function might be something like a cubic. So, here's the cubic graph pictured here. If we choose any one x value, that x value produces just one unique y value. And that's true of whichever x value we choose. Okay. This x value up here produces one really big y value somewhere up here. This x value out here produces this one negative y value down here. If x is zero, y is zero. There is one unique y value to correspond with that one unique x value. Okay. It, the, the reverse is also true in a one-to-one -one function because it's for every one y value, we also only get one x value. Okay. One piece of input corresponds to one, one unique piece of input corresponds to one unique piece of output. Um, so if you consider the relations on the previous page, which ones might be one to one? Now it's a slightly random selection of functions here, so it's not giving us a good range, but let's have a look. Um, so a straight line would be a one to one function. Apologies, some of these axes have become a bit faint in the print. Um, so any one x value produces just one y value. Any one x value produces just one y value. Any one x value produces just one y value. Okay, and vice versa. So a line would be a one to one function. The hyperbola would be a one to one function. This one x value here produces just the one y value here. Okay, this one x value produces this one y value up here. This one x value, one y value. This one x value, just one y value. And again, any y value only matches with one x value. Okay, you could pick any y value and it would just produce one 
x value will correspond to or partner with one x value. Um, what else is here? Uh, I don't think any of these others would be one to one. The the this particular example of a non-random set of points is one to one also because it's essentially straight just some of the points on a straight line. Um, so for the same reasons that a straight line is a one to one function, that would also be a one to one function or a one to one relation. My apologies, we're talking about relations. We'll talk about um, which of those are functions in a minute. Um, so many to one relations mean that more than one input or, or x value can correspond to one unique y value. So a parabola is a classic example of a many to one function. And by many we don't mean lots and lots, we just mean more than one. Okay. So here is here are more than one x values that both correspond to the same y value for this relation. So one y value, one um, output value corresponding to more than one input value. So, you know, thinking about, you know, the parabola, if this was negative three and this is positive three, then this is nine, okay? There is more than one x value that corresponds to the same one y value, okay? Um, let's have a look on the previous page and have a look at what else might be many to one. I don't know that there's going to be many examples of that up here. Let's have a look. The random set of order pairs, unless we know exactly the randomness, we can't be sure of what kind they are at all. The parabola we know is many to one. So I'm going to note these. This was uh, one to one here. Sorry, one to one. This one was one to one. This is many to one. This is one to one. We already had that one. Uh, I don't think we've classified any of the others so far. Okay, other many to one. So more than one x value producing just the one unique y value. Okay, so the regular parabola is many to one, but the inverse one isn't. Okay, we haven't got. Um, it's it's in fact the other way. We'll talk about this. There is for one x value we get many y values in this case. So that would be a one to many, not many to one. Um, Many, most of these are going to be many to many. Uh, this one might be many to one, I think. So here we have many more than one x value that gives the same y value. Okay, more than one x value that results in the same y value. Uh, more than one x value that results in the same y value. Okay. So this one would be a many to one function. But the point is is that for you know if we have just one y value it it must correspond to well not every y value but it should correspond to can correspond to many x values. Um, the frequency curve also, the um, bell curve here is also many to one. More than one x value corresponding to the same one y value. So this would be many to one. Uh, this one here without knowing kind of what happens to the graph up here it's going to be hard for us to talk about this one so I might omit that one from us talking about it. The face and the house are both you know slightly silly examples as with other random points but let's um, look at classifying um, these other ones. Okay I think we are good there. Oh. All right one to many. So one to many, we already talked about this inverse parabola um, as an example of a one to many function. So for every one x value, it, they can correspond to. So it doesn't mean they have to. So for example, this one x value only corresponds with one y value, but it is possible somewhere on the graph there will be one x value that corresponds to more than one y value. So the inverse parabola is a classic example of that, um, of a one to many. So let's denote this one as a one to many. Uh, I think that's going to be the only one to many. I think all the remainings are going to classify as many to many's. A many to many relation, more than one input or x value can correspond to more than one output or y value and sort of and vice versa. So here in this a circle is a classic example of a many to many. So we have two x values here that both correspond to this same one y value, but they also both correspond to this other y value. So more than one x value matching with more than one y value. Okay. Um, 
So anything basically that loops back on itself like the circle does is going to be many to many, which is why I could pretty quickly here determine that because of these loops here, you know, it's essentially two circle like shapes, you know, more than one X value for the same Y value, but those two X values also could correspond to more than one Y value. Anytime you've got a loop, that's going to happen. More than one X value corresponding to the same one Y value. Um, not so, oh, and also corresponding to, in fact, can correspond to these two X values can correspond to that same one Y value, but they can, this X value can also correspond to this Y value. This X value can also correspond to this Y value. So many X values corresponding to many Y values. Um, so many to many. As I said, really anything that loops back on itself can immediately be classified as many to many. And by that, I mean sort of, you know, a variation on a circle, many to many. Uh, and similar here, we've got, you know, three small circle like shapes there, many to many. The face would definitely be many to many, even though I ruled it out because it was a bit of a silly example. Um, and this cartoid sort of, you know, rounded heart shape on its side is similar to a circle as well. Also many to many. Uh, it's a bit hard without knowing too much about what this shape does up here. You know, does it loop up here? Does it continue on, um, etc. But all the same, I, I suspect that that's probably a many-to-many -many function as well. Many-to-many -many relation, my apologies. So we're classifying our relations. Um, anything can be drawn on a Cartesian plane is a relation. Every single relation can be classified as one of four things. So I'm not saying that these couldn't be classified. They're really probably all many to many's. Um, it's just without sort of having a bit more precise information about what's actually going on in them. It can be, they're a bit um, slightly complicated examples. So every single class um, relation can be classified as one of these four things. But then only some of these relations are functions. So whilst anything that can be drawn on the Cartesian plane is a relation, only some relations are functions. A relation is only a function if no two ordered pairs, so no two sets of coordinates of the relation have the same first element, so the same x coordinate. So no two points on the relation, no two points on the graph can have the same x coordinate in order for it to be classified as a function. So, for example, if we think about our four different kinds of functions, one-to-one, -one, many-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many, -many, we want to think about which of these would be functions. So, one-to-one -one would definitely be a function. For any one x value, we only get one possible y value. And so that means that every point will have a different x value. Okay? Hence, there are no two points with the same x coordinate. Many-to-many, -many, sorry, many-to-one is the same. Okay? Whilst more than one X value can correspond to the one Y value, um, that's okay. But the, the point is, is that we wouldn't have any two points on here with the same X coordinate. We would have two points with the same Y value. These two points, let's go back to that example. If that's three, nine, and that's negative three, nine, there's two points with the same Y value, but that's okay. That doesn't stop them being a function. They have different X values. And every single point on that graph would have an, a different X value. Let's actually think about what would it look like for two points to have the same x coordinate. If two points had the same x coordinate, they would have to sit one above the other. Okay? So this point here, you know, negative 3, 5 and negative 3, 1, they have the same x coordinate because they're vertically above each other. Alright, so anything where you're not going to have any you're not going to have points that are vertically above each other is going to be a function. So one to one and many to one both meet that category. One to many, however, doesn't. Here's a classic example of where we've got two points vertically above each other, which means that they have the same y value, um, the same x value. Sorry. Similarly with many to many. Here's an example of two points vertically above each other, so hence they have the same x value. Now let's be clear, it doesn't have to be everywhere along the graph. Okay, here, yes, I can draw that there's only one point with that x value, but the minute there is any x value where there's two points, it is all of a sudden not a function. Okay, So yeah, over here, that x value has only one y value. That's okay. But there are other values, other x values with more than one y value, which means that there are other places where there are definitely points which would have, there are definitely multiple points that will have the same 
x coordinate. There aren't multiple points that will have an x coordinate of 0, but there are multiple points that will have an x coordinate of 1, of 2, of 3, of 7.9, etc. Okay? So these two are not going to be functions. These two are going to be functions. Okay? So two classifications, two types of relations are going to be functions. It's a simple graphical test to help us determine whether or not a relation is a function. We actually really just did it then in talking through that definition of what would it mean for two points to have the same x value. And if two points had the same x value, that would mean they're vertically above each other. So therefore, this idea of the vertical line test can be used to graphically decide whether or not something is a function. So if you draw a vertical line and can swipe it the whole way across the graph, move it horizontally the whole way across the graph so that it only ever touches the graph once, then that graph must be a function, okay? So, for example, if we think about, you know, let's draw a vertical line here. Let's pretend that's vertical. Let's see if I can grab that line. And I imagine swiping that line across, if it only ever, like a barcode reader sort of, if it only ever touches the graph once, so if I can stop it anywhere and it's only touching the graph at one point, so, I'm sorry, so here for example, then that's a function, okay? If, however, it would, it would hit the graph twice at any point, it doesn't have to be everywhere, it also doesn't have to touch the graph at all, but if at any point it would touch the graph, and I'm not saying over here it would be touching the graph, the cubic would just be very, very high up, okay? But if I can, if it touches the graph at any, if there is any x value where it touches the graph twice, then it's not a function. Okay, so the parabola, again, we can imagine swiping our vertical line along. It only ever intersects with the graph at one point at a time, and so therefore that's a function. Whereas the one-to-many, let me scroll up here a little, the one-to-many, if I swipe my vertical line across, it's fine here, just touches the graph once, but the minute I go past here, it's now hitting the graph twice. So that would mean that at this x value, there are two points with that x coordinate. There are two points with that x coordinate, etc. And the circle similarly fine here, just hitting the graph once, but the minute I go past here, I'm hitting the graph at two points. Okay, so not a function. So that vertical line test as a, a um, test for whether or not something is a function. So relations, anything you can draw on a Cartesian plane. Relations can be classified as four different types, one to one, one to many, many to one, many to many. Only some relations are functions. Okay, a function is a relation where no two points on the function have the same x coordinate. Um, the graphical test for that is a vertical line test, and only one to one and um, many to one relations would be functions. One to many and many to many would not be functions. Okay, just a couple of questions here to sort of practice those ideas questions one, two, and three from exercise 1c.